we are back to one of the most iconic tracks in the NICS, Evergreen Raceway live from Washington State. Sebastian Cole in first, Kyle Lamarty in second, Martin in third, Rod in fourth, Penelope Johnson in fifth. Let's go short track racing once again. Sebastian Cole got a pretty good start onto lap one. And he is going to be clear already, comfortably taking that first lap. There's a lot of cars going two, maybe even three wide going into turn one. Looks like nobody's going to take a three wide. Here we go. JT Boyd and Eddie Sanchez. He's going to be forced out to the outside. That's not going to be pretty good for Boyd. You can see he scrapped the wall. Sebastian Cole is pretty comfortable in his place right now. Martin comfortably in second, but Penelope Johnson's looking. Both Cole and Martin are looking for their Cole's looking for his second one of the season. Martin is looking for his third. And here comes Edgewater going to the inside of Penelope Johnson looking for his first. Lamarty, as long as he stays on that outside line, he's not going to be in a pretty good spot to win this race. Getting onto that inside lane is all that matters. No significant wreck sets of Yeti. Here's what's going on in the back of the pack. You can see a lot of cars here are completely clustered, going two, maybe even three wide. Here it is. There is a three wide here between Molina and Baker. JT Boyd is still stuck on that outside lane. He needs to get into the inside now if he wants any chance of getting to the top 10. Still three wide. Boyd's doing a pretty good job of holding to that lane, but there we go. Matt Bolita's is clear of him. Boyd hits the wall again. Back to two wide. Is it going to be three? Yes, it is. All of this is happening while they're battling for the top 20. Barton and Edgewater in a very tight battle for second here at lap 14. Roderick looking at it as well. At the moment, it is all Sebastian Cole. He has a two-second lead around the rest of the pack. But here we go. It's three wide going into turn three. All of these cars battle for the top ten. It's Penelope Johnson that gets sucker hold. Who's going to be the last car in the top ten after this lap? It looks like it's going to be the 99 of Penelope. But her spot's going to be taken away from the 48 of Stockholm. There is that 48 car. Morrison Jr. could get past inside the 99 as well. It's at times like these where all the cars could go single file if they wanted to. Most of them probably would because these cars on the outside are having no luck. You can see that JT Boyd has fallen all the way. Started in 12th, fallen all the way back to 31st solely because he could just not get in that inside line. And Fjordson is in a pretty big threat of losing his regular season championship as well because of how far outside he is while Lamarty is comfortable in his position. Lamarty is the last car in the top 10. He's actually getting a help from the 48 car of Dane Stockholm. Penelope Johnson doing a good job at sticking to the outside lane, but it's not going to be for long. Is the 48 going to dive into the corner? There are three wide going into turn three, all battling for the top 10. And look at that, it's actually going to be Penelope Johnson who benefits the most out of that. Is she going to try to outbreak Lamarty? Oh, she's now just three wide again, and just as I say that, she's getting sucker hold once again. The 48 is now the last car in the top 10. Morrissey Jr. and his teammate Opsole to the inside. Lamarty stuck in the middle. Let's get on to lap 19 here. This is where the pit cycles are going to start. Edgewater, Martin, and Rada all battling for second. We imagine Sebastian Cole is going to have no issue going on to pit road. But who is going to be pitting? It looks like Cole is staying out. And Edgewater is going to be the first one to pit. Martin and Roderick stay out. Edgewater, Rada, LGD, Stockholm is going to stay out as well. Boyd has already come into pit. That's a pretty interesting strategy from the 71. Now let's work our way all the way back here. There is Matt Molina. Are we going to find the 45 of Sebastian Cole? There he is. Now how much interruption is he going to have when he goes on to pit road? It looks like he's not going to have any interruptions at the moment. No significant traffic to worry about. 
There is Edgewater. He's going to have to slow down a little bit to find his spot. But for the most part, that was pretty good pitting. Looks like Rod is looking to get some damage repaired. Or he's just waiting until Mark gets out of the pit. But either way, he is not moving. There he goes. And remember, all of these cars have to work their way around Sebastian Cole twice. If they want to get the lead from him. And there goes Cole with no threats in front of him. Actually, never mind. Here comes Edgewater, however. The 45 and the 44 right next to each other. The 44 had a tremendous pit stop, and now they're side by side for the lead. I don't think we're going to want to miss any of these last 10 laps because the 44 and the 45, Bill Edgewater versus Sebastian Cole here at Evergreen. We could be in for another fantastic finish. There is the 45. Once those tires wear out a little bit in the last five laps, that wear is going to be very exposed. Is that going to be a chance for the 44 to take advantage? The last car in the top five is the 52 of Zach Roderick. The last car in the top ten. The last car in the top ten is the 10 of Morrison Jr. And look at that. That was actually a very good pitting strategy from JT Boyd. Started in 12th, pitted in 31st, and now was back in 11th. But let's get back to the battle for the lead here. The 44 versus the 45. They have eight laps to go this time by. Is Edgewater going to time his move? Is there, there might be some lap traffic in the way. The fastest lap bonus at the moment goes to Martin once again. Not surprising. The 44 looking to put the bumper on the 45. But when does he do it? It's all about timing. Because if you pull the bump and run now. You know that they, Cole can easily just do a fact to you. The Toyota and the Ferrari all battling for that first spot. The 88, the 48, the 51, and the 29 all have some pretty significant engine failures. The 51 of Dustin Keys is finally coming out. Cole is actually much faster than Edgewater on that lap. He has increased his gap, but there is going to be some lap traffic to deal with. The 51 of Keys has separated himself from the 45 and the 44. And when we thought this was going to be a great finish, Sebastian Cole just keeps on chugging. Ever so slightly increasing his lead from Edgewater. It's going to be five laps to go after this. There is some lap traffic in the way. How effectively will that change this matchup? The last car in the top 10 is still the 10 of Morrison Jr. Seems to be pretty unchanged for now. Five laps to go. Sebastian Cole, if he gets win number two, will be just the second driver to get multiple wins this season. Doing a pretty good job at replacing his predecessor, Topeak Mine. There we go. Edgewater actually was faster out of that corner. It's going to be three to go, but I think that's going to do it. Sebastian Cole has just been the better car all day. This is four laps to go here. The battle for six between Martin and Opsel is getting pretty intense here. I don't think JT Boyd's going to catch up to Morrison Jr. But Opsel's actually closing in on the 19 car. The Opsel's closing in on the 70. He got a really good run off of there. Three to go. Martin onto the outside wall. He got a little bit loose there. That's going to let the 19 pass him. Two laps to go this time by. Sebastian Cole still has the lead. Now Zach Roderick can make up some positions here. The 8 and the 07 are fine with where they are. And look at this. Martin and Opsel side by side. Battling for that 6 putt. They are racing each other oh so hard for just one more position. Martin outbreaks him going into turn three. Opsel's going to get a good run of him coming off of four. And there we go. We've seen it. Are they going to make contact? Yes, they are. Opsel's into the wall. They both ricochet off each other going into turn one. Let's get back to Sebastian Cole going down turn three and four for the last time. The second driver to get win number two of the season coming to the finish line. Sebastian Cole wins once again here at Evergreen. And look at that. Martin actually did get the 19 back for that sixth spot. And how about this? JT Boyd just passed Penelope Johnson. Dustin Morsey Jr. had to pit early, and he worked himself into the top 10. What a performance from JT Boyd.
Sebastian Cole the winner, but the 71 earns just as much credit. From 12th to 31st to 10th. 